be a failure. As long as it's not going to kill you, it's going to make you what? Stronger. Welcome back to the HN vlog. Uh, today I want to talk about a topic that we mo we all know. We have you hear on conferences. It's one thing about hearing some something talk about this topic, and it's another thing about he I mean seeing for yourself. I travel a lot, and I keep seeing the same problem. You know, uh, youth unemployment. It's going to be the biggest issue the continent of Africa will be facing in the next few decades plus. And, and, and when you look at the statistic, just as a, the statistic alone should, should, should make you a little bit scared, you know? 2050, population of Africa times two. One point some billion, that would be two point some billion. 50% of those people will be living in urban area. Urban area in cities. Some cities are already overcrowded. Lagos, 10 plus million people. Kinshasa, 10 plus million. Can we do 20 million plus? I don't know. You know, can, can, can we double up with the same space? I, I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm not a, a for, I, I don't see the future. I'm not here to uh, speculate on what's gonna happen. But I'm here to really, number one, make people aware especially us African, what the challenges are about to come. And, and if, you, if you don't see that's going to be a problem, look at the Arab Spring. You know, youth unemployment can be the biggest cause of social unrest in Africa if, if we don't be careful. You know, and African governments, I know they're aware of that. What they're doing about it, some doing a better job than others, but that's not the point of this vlog. The point of this vlog is is I, I, I want to share my opinion about what I believe needs to be done to really minimize this unemployment problem. Because a young man, especially a young man, not having anything to do, it mess up with your self-esteem, mess up with your ego. There's something about working that brings a self-worth to a man. Also a woman, I'm not here to, to, to discriminate about gender. But there's something especially about men, our ego. You know, if, if you can't provide for your family, you can't provide for yourself, you can't take, take a woman uh, uh, to a date, you know, and pay the bills and all, that, that mess you up big time, man. You're gonna be like, yo, I gotta find a way to make money. You know, and, and unemployment, I mean, statistically, it's a fact. Increased uh, crime, social issues, and all the other negative aspects, drugs, alcohol, name it. Unemployment has a factor into that stuff. So, but I'm not here, I'm not an economist, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not here to, to, to share what the, what the issue is. I'm trying to share some of the, 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 um, the solution I think uh, should be implemented. And uh, they, they, there's quite an uh, of, uh, interesting issue uh, that can be... Um, so I was saying, there's quite a few uh, solutions that exist to solve that problem. You know, one of the things that I don't see a lot and is really needed is vocational training, plumbers, electricians. Uh, and some countries are doing... Actually, Rwanda has a very good program, but people don't know about this program. I even forgot about the name, but but we we don't hear a lot of those programs. You know, uh, forklift driver, truck drivers, all those are, are skills that are, are needed in the marketplace and there's not enough training program for that. Um, and, and people learn from other people, they don't learn it properly uh, the way they should be. Vocational training should be really promoted well should be put in the forefront of things, man. There's huge need, there's huge gap into that field. Um, people that have the know-how to do uh, some of the work that is needed, you know. And I think that should be, there should be even more investment into that aspect. 
The second thing, again, in Africa, for example, there's a huge gap when it comes to engineer, software engineer, and all those things. Uh, and again, some countries are doing more work than others. That's great, but there has to be more investment in that space. But you can, you, I see a lot of school giving bad um, education and training in software engineering. And that's the problem. You have a bunch of software engineers that don't know anything about software engineering. They know theory, not practically. Um, so it's not just about, uh, I think we need to improve our educational system for sure. But uh, this notion of university, for your program and all, needs to be done. We need to get rid of that stuff. You finish high school, you want to be a, a, a software engineer. You don't need four-year degree. You don't need to spend two years learning about, you know, they call it refresh courses, about what you finish in high school. And then in your last two years, it, it, it's about uh, uh, teaching you uh, the, 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 the actual, you know, specialty courses you, you were supposed to do. That's, that's a scheme right there, man. That's a scheme from schools to make more money. You should go to high school straight to a, a two-year uh, 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 degree for what you need to, to, to be learning, period. We need to find a way to speak. Man, we, we need to find a way to revolutionize the educational system, man. That's the only way this can speed up the process of fighting unemployment. You know, unfortunately, uh, the, the mindset of, of, of most people is we do small steps to solve big problems. No. You know, if you want to solve a big problem, you have to dramatically change the whole aspect of how to solve that problem. You know, you have to come up with really, really disruptive solution, uh, mechanism uh, to solve that problem. You know, we, we, we change a few modules here, a few modules now. No, we have to look at the whole value chain change dramatically. Speed up the process from the time you, you finish school to the time you get uh, to, the, to the real world and start working. Uh, vocational training, like I said. Another thing is, I mean, we talk about entrepreneurship. And we talk about how, how governments are using entrepreneurship as a way to solve the unemployment problem. But why is it not working? Because it's not working. Uh, last time I checked, it's not working. Because the rates of failure is so high, you know, that most entrepreneurs fail. So entrepreneurship is not necessarily the right vehicle to solve unemployment, unless, unless we do a few things. Number one, we need to change our tax laws in Africa. We need to make much simpler tax process. If you make less than a certain amount, your tax laws is very easy to understand. I mean, I've never seen so many complicated tax laws in Africa, and Rwanda is extremely complicated tax law. You know, every day my account come up and say, no, this has changed, you need to do this, you need to do that. That's money. You know, you start a business, the first thing, there's two things you have to do when you start a business. You have to hire a lawyer and hire an account before you even make any dime. Those are the two things you have to do or you're gonna fail and get in trouble. So that, that's a problem. Uh, the second thing we need to put in place is we need to put a uh, uh, business in the box, ready business. That'll make the, the, the entry point for entrepreneurship much, much easier. You know, so instead of you building a business from scratch, now you can start a business in a box ready to go franchising whatever the case that is you know you go to a company you already have a business in a box ready you buy into the business they give you the support they need they already have the accounting process they can help you on they already have the supply chain for the products or services it's a plug and play you know and all you have to do is execute and take care of the customer there's a reason why franchise model success rate is above 80 percent 80 percent of franchise succeed compared to traditional entrepreneur business startup which 80 plus percent fail so there's a reason why now the, your job is to take care of the customer you don't have to worry about figuring out how am i going to get my supply chain how am i going to get my product from how am i going to do this how am i going to do that 
the, the, the idea of a red the micro franchise idea came from franchising you know I almost bought a franchise before I moved back to Africa so I learned a lot about franchising I love that business model you know there's a reason why they're so successful there's a reason why uh, uh, it's much easier to expand uh, as a model than than traditional business and you don't see that in in Africa except South Africa but franchising is almost non-existent we need laws we need to in, uh, bring more franchising we need to uh, help existing company to become franchisors you know we need to put a lot more resources I think the the African bank and government need, needs to really understand this and put more emphasis on that aspect that's very 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 important you know um, and, and technology is disrupting, it's eliminating so many jobs so fast uh, that the new technology where we need engineers are not being replaced fast enough. You know, so that's also a big problem, you know. So we need more quality uh, uh, system. And I talk about that, educational system. Vocational training, educational system, much more innovative business model that is needed in the market, um, like franchising. Man, that, that would be a game changer. Uh, 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 fixing the tax laws because that's that's a hurdle. Man. Uh, let, let's talk a little bit about taxes because that, that's a topic I, I've been bringing up a few times in a few conferences that nobody wants to talk about. You know, because number one, they think, well, uh, taxes are needed, you know, for, for country to move up and all. Yeah, yeah. But if you kill the private sector, there won't be no tax from the private sector. You know, I, you, you pay, number one issue, and I talk about that, we pay the same amount of tax as a big corporation for labor tax. That's crazy. How am I supposed to attract talent? I can't. You know, an MTN guy, MTN has more money. Uh, uh, well, they, 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 can, they can afford to pay X amount of money plus the 30%. You know, I gotta bring somebody as a contractor, so I pay 15%, or I gotta outsource the job. I pay 15%. You know, I'm saving 15% because I'm gonna use that 15% to build my business. When I'm an MTN or an Airtel or a company already established, I don't need to build a business. I've already reached a certain cap. I'm just trying to, you know, build some verticals to increase my market share, but I'm already having revenue, so I don't need to build well, I don't need, I don't, I'm not worried about revenue. In my case, I'm trying to build revenue. How am I gonna pay 30% I ain't even got no revenue yet, or little revenue? That's crazy. So I gotta raise money. I use part of that money to pay taxes or money I ain't, I ain't even making yet. You know, so I gotta be smart. I gotta use my money in smart way. So I outsource. I would love to have full-time employees, more full-time employees, but I can't. It's too expensive, you know? Uh, um, and then you got a very ta uh, complex uh, tax laws. And I'm not gonna get into the tax because it, it's, there's so many different aspects of taxes that I, I don't even know, you know. I, true story, guys. Now, I'm, I'm telling you true story. We just got audited, well, VAT audit. Uh, it's a simple one. And then they had changed some stuff and all. My account didn't even understand it. We had a meeting after the audit with my account and said, okay, what's the way we need to move forward to fix this problem so we, we can be current with the tax law? She didn't even understand how to do it. So if, if the account don't understand, and she's a, she's a known account, I'm not talking about a, uh, uh, somebody who's just came out of school. No, I've been an account for 10 plus years. More than that. She didn't even know. She doesn't know. I'm expecting to know that. I brought another friend of mine account, really well known here. He asked me for a few days to figure out how to fix this. <laughs> I'm laughing because it's funny, man. It's funny. We we make laws to justify that justify government needs, not taking in notion the need of the private sector. It's, it's the problem the world is facing, not just us. This is not a, a African problem, it's a world problem. You know, um, the good thing in other country, you can debate, you can fight, you can argue and all those things, you know, but uh, but anyway, that's, that's a different uh, conversation. But that was hilarious to me, man. 
you know, I was like, man, and and, and that's another topic. And uh, but yeah, that's what we now hiring full time employees. You know, uh, uh, so we do contracting, we do outsourcing a lot, and, and and I have no shame to say, man, I gotta build a business. I'm not here to, to create jobs unless I got money coming in. You know, my my uh, 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 job is to build a sustainable business and make sure that the investor get their return they expect to get, uh, to get based on the investment they gave us. Period. Everything else is a plus. You know, if we got money, then we can uh, uh, um, we can hire more employees. We can build full time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But anyway, you get the drift. Uh, that's that's the key point. The last thing is is uh, is funny. We need more access to smart money, not just regular money, not loan at twenty percent uh, interest rate or eighteen percent interest rate, not just your traditional VC coming here and trying to give you a, a lesson of why your business is not up to par. We need smart money. We need money that government inject knowingly that most of those projects will fail. You know, we need to allow startups to go public uh, and get money from the public. You need to ease up on crowd investing laws. We need to ease up on a lot of stuff uh, uh, so we can make access to money much, much broader for a lot more people, you know? And we need to move away from those. Uh, uh, there's a lot of credit uh, uh, program out there. A lot of credit for farmers and all, but they're getting killed with interest. And that's gonna be a biggest problem in the future. You know, it's creating more poverty than actually creating a solution to those guys. Because a guy that gets credit before you use his own cash, he gets a little bit more money, buy more supply, but his interest rate is so high, he needs to charge um, the customer that fee. Then you see now cost is going high and all those things. But anyway, we talk about unemployment, we talk about credit system, I'll do a video about that uh, shortly. But those are the issue guys. That's the problem. And I know there's more issues going on, but if we don't fix this unemployment problem, man, oof, I, I, I wouldn't want to be around when, when, when stuff start going crazy out here um, on the continent. Because it's something will, will have to happen. Uh, either government will have to be replaced or a solution will have to be created. But this problem is not a, an impossible task to solve. It's not, a, it's not a big task to solve. It can be solved. There's a lack of action. There's a lack of, of, of innovative ideas uh, to be implemented. And everything that's been done, I, I, I'm tired of going to conferences and all we talk about the same issue same issues man. every year all oh, this oh, it's the same freaking issues you know it's almost like we on the on on on, on pause we just we just creating this cycle we're talking about the same shit you know the, the the solutions are there you know if we can implement the few things i just mentioned alone will be a, a big game change you know things about a value chain you know, you solve the, if you understand the whole value chain and you bring the missing component to the value chain, you know, and of course you build a sustainable bottom behind those modules that you bring up, that's it. Now, it sounds easy, it's not easy. I agree, it's not easy, it takes time. You have to implement, it takes funding and all those things. But we gotta get started, you know. 40 years, when, 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 when the time comes and the population is double, and we're gonna be like, wow, just like global warming, you saw all this shit happening about you know global warming and all this problem we having. You know now we all frantic about everything. You know that's the crazy thing. You know uh, why we why are we not trying to solve problems before they become a, a, a much bigger problem and have a much more negative impact? That's the human nature. 